Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 10. Two men lead Houston police on a high-speed pursuit ending just outside a middle school. The reason police were chasing them. Deputies find a baby dead inside a home in Northwest Harris County. What we've uncovered about the newborn's mom and why her other children are not living with her. A great-grandfather minding his own business gets caught in the crossfire during a shootout at a laundromat. How his family is remembering him tonight. But we begin tonight with new details on what led to a high-speed police chase that ended in front of a school. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Baeza. Hello, I'm Dominique Soxa. Sky 2 is over Thomas Middle School when officers arrested the driver and the passenger. Channel 2's Philip Mann is joining us live at the Harris County Jail tonight where the young men are behind bars. Philip? Yeah, police say these guys were armed, driving a stolen vehicle and refusing to stop. But the scariest part is they were heading straight towards a school. Sky 2 catching a dramatic car chase playing out in southeast Houston Thursday afternoon. Police say it started with a motorist calling 911. They gave us a description of the vehicle that said one of the occupants is waiting a gun outside of the window. After some close calls on the road, the car finally crashing into a fence outside Thomas Middle School. The two suspects quickly bailing from the car and a new chase begins, this time on foot. One of them running toward the school building, then alongside it before finally being cornered. As officers detained him not far away in a nearby field, officers tracking down the other. This woman, who didn't want to be identified, was at the scene claiming to be the sister of one of those arrested. She says both of them are juveniles. He's not this type of person at all. They are getting in trouble for anything like that before? No, no. But police say the car they were driving was stolen, carjacked, in fact. The victim of that carjacking telling Channel 2 off camera that it happened outside a nearby convenience store Wednesday night. There was a sound, like, you know, like somebody screaming and it was a gunshot like nearly five times, five to seven times. Thankfully, there were no shots fired in today's incident, but tonight police are looking into the possibility that these guys may be linked to a recent cell phone store robbery. Reporting live in downtown Houston, Philip Mena, KPRC, Channel 2 News. We have new developments tonight in a deadly shootout at a Houston laundromat. A great-grandfather killed after being caught in the crossfire of somebody else's argument. Channel 2's Keith Garvin is live in the Fifth Ward tonight and just spoke to the man's family. Keith, they must be devastated. Oh, th Dominique, they certainly are. There was a police officer who returned to and left the scene about 30 minutes ago as they are still looking for those two suspects. Let me give you a look at the scene. Those two chairs you see behind me, that is the exact location the victim was at when he was shot. Witnesses say he fell to the ground, then ran inside where he collapsed and died. His death has left behind a grieving family. Anything you needed, he would try to help you. If he had it, he would give it to you. Michael Wartell's family wants you to know he was more than just a victim of homicide. The 62-year-old Army veteran was a great-grandfather, son, brother, and they say a friend who never knew a stranger. He was a very caring person, liked to help people. He used to go over there to the store when the people were, were clothing to make sure nobody jumped in to try to take their money. Wartell was caught in the middle of gunfire outside this washateria at Waco and Buck near Waco and the East Freeway on the east side. Investigators say a teenage boy and an adult male pulled out guns and started shooting after they retrieved those weapons during an argument. The two apparently had a long running beef. He was outside, he was trying to run to get away and he ran inside the laundromat and collapsed. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Wartell lived with his mother just across the street from where he was gunned down. Left now without his presence, his family have their grief and many painful questions. I just keep asking myself, why did this happen to him? If he had just been at home, it wouldn't have happened. It's okay, baby. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> Yeah, your heart can't help but go out to that family. I spoke to HPD just a few minutes ago, and they tell me that they still have not arrested those two suspects, but they do believe they have some good leads after interviewing several witnesses here at the scene. Reporting live from the Fifth Ward, Keith Garvin, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Keith, thank you.
A newborn baby has been found dead in a Northwest Harris County home, and tonight we've uncovered new details about the mother's past. Channel 2's Jennifer Bauer joining us live at the house. She has new information about why the woman's other children are no longer living with her. Jennifer? Yeah, that mother apparently has six other children, Bill, ranging in age from 1 to 11 years old. They are currently living with relatives because of an open CPS investigation, an investigation that was started well before today. Now, we have spoken to investigators, but we don't know exactly what the mother was being investigated for. We do know, however, that her six other children were taken away. Channel 2 News has learned new information in the investigation of a baby found dead inside this Northwest Harris County home. CPS investigators confirm they currently have a case against the baby's mother. It was opened before today. The mother reportedly has six other children who have been staying with family members because of that other CPS investigation. Today's discovery of a dead newborn inside the home is one more thing investigators will now look at. Neighbors say they didn't know the woman well, and she hadn't lived here long. I would never see her out. It was just in passing, in a car. Never saw her out and about, just in passing. Never spoke to her like I would my regular neighbors. It was not like that. It was just she was in and out. Deputies were sent to this home by hospital staff after the baby's mother showed up at the hospital and said she had delivered a baby last week. Workers were worried and asked investigators to come check on the child. Deputies found the newborn dead inside. They are not saying how the child died or how long it had been there. Investigators do tell us there is evidence that the mother delivered the baby inside this home. Tonight, everything remains under investigation. We're live in Northwest Harris County. I'm Jennifer Bauer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Jennifer, thank you. We have new information tonight in the German Wings crash investigation. Tonight, some European and other airlines are imposing stricter cockpit rules after the co-pilot intentionally crashed that jet in the French Alps on Tuesday, killing all 150 people on board. As we first told you last night at 10 o'clock, the cockpit voice recorder reveals the captain, who had briefly left the cockpit, was locked out by co-pilot Andreas Lubitz as Lubitz drove that jet into the mountainside. Tonight, families of those killed are asking why. Channel 2's Anusha Rasta live in the West Phoenix suburb of Goodyear, where it's believed that Lubitz trained. Anusha? Bill, Dominique, that's right. According to the FAA, Lubitz trained here and received a pilot's license back in 2012. Now, this facility is called the Airline Training Center, Arizona. You can see the airplane hangars here to my right. They've also got classrooms and dorm rooms here at this facility for their training pilots. Now, according to their website, Lufthansa German Airlines, which owned the German Wings airplane that crashed, uses this campus primarily to train its pilots. These are the devastating and incomprehensible images of what's now left of an airplane that once carried nearly 200 passengers. German Wings Flight 9525 came plummeting down from the sky and crashed into the French Alps on Tuesday during a trip from Barcelona to Germany. European investigators are now pointing the finger of blame at the plane's co-pilot. This man, 27-year-old Andreas Lubitz. Prosecutors are accusing him of a murder-suicide mission that killed all 150 people on board the flight. They say the German pilot received training thousands of miles away at this facility here in Arizona. The Airline Training Center Arizona touts a reputation for being a world-class training facility, a campus where Lufthansa German Airlines and even the German Air Force trains its pilots. According to Federal Aviation Administration records, Lubitz had a valid FAA pilot's license to operate a single-engine plane. Officials in his home country, Germany, say they had never found anything unusual in background checks. Friends and colleagues of Lubitz paint a similar, non-problematic and rather friendly picture of the accused murderer, leaving everyone to wonder what could have pushed this man to cause such horror. And Lubitz began training with Lufthansa back in 2008, including his time here at this facility in Arizona. He had no known criminal record or any ties to any terrorist organizations. We'll continue to follow this story for you here in Arizona and bring you the latest on KPRC Channel 2. For now, reporting live near Phoenix, Arizona, Anusha Rasta, KPRC Channel 2 News. Good reporting, Anusha. In the meantime, we just checked, and a ninth grader who was stabbed earlier today at Clearbrook High School is in fair condition at Children's Memorial Herman Hospital. 
hospital. Investigators say a 10th grader stabbed him in the leg, neck and stomach with a pocket knife inside a classroom this afternoon. That 10th grader was quickly taken into custody. Also tonight, a Central Texas highway is still closed after a tractor trailer rig knocked a portion of an overpass onto the interstate below. Here's a map of the area. The 18 wheeler hit a beam that was being used to build a bridge across I-35 at FM 2484, about 50 miles north of Austin. One person was killed when part of that bridge collapsed. Three others were injured. Now we're learning the driver of that semi could face charges. Channel 2 investigator Bill Spencer joining us live in Salado, Bell County with the newest information tonight. Bill. Bill, crash scene investigators working this area right now are going to be checking into that truck driver's logbook, his bill of lading, and how many hours he'd been driving to determine if he was negligent. That is because one man died here today. Like a giant jigsaw puzzle turned upside down. That's how one witness described the mass of crumbled concrete and crushed trucks that now litter I-35 in Salado. Tonight, the hard work of clearing tons of debris littered over both sides of the interstate goes on and on as troopers investigate this fatal accident. The driver of this F-150 pickup truck was killed instantly when one of two massive concrete beams landed right on top of his vehicle. The white truck was on fire and it looked like it had been completely I mean it was smashed the cab was on fire so it was it was pretty horrific it happened at 11:15 Thursday morning when the driver of an 18 wheeler plowed into one of the concrete beams supporting this yet to be completed bridge at FM 2484 the impact was so powerful it snapped two huge beams like matchsticks raining tons of concrete onto the traffic below. To give you an idea how much weight landed on those vehicles, each one of those beams is 135 feet long and weighs 135,000 pounds. Lori Fleet drives her two children to school across this bridge every morning and is stunned. It's pretty tragic knowing that a gentleman lost his life. Um, and it's, it's just hard to believe that, that that bridge, it's not even finished yet and already being destroyed. And DPS investigators will be working this crash scene all night, and again, they say this truck driver could face criminal charges up to and including manslaughter. Reporting live in Salado, Bill Spencer, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Protecting your social media accounts from hackers who want to do harm. Coming up, what they're after and the steps you can take to keep your account safe. Then keep yourself warm, too. We're heading toward a chilly morning, but a wonderful weekend. I'll have your forecast. Thank you, Frank, and more than 250 firefighters responded after an explosion leveled a New York City apartment building. What investigators believe happened here, next on Channel 2 News at 10. Bed bugs. Anybody and everybody is susceptible. Invading Houston homes. All they care about is...